Hey guys, today we're going to discuss the spent spinner, what they are and how to fish them. So as part of the mayfly life cycle, the nymph starts off as an egg, hatches out into a nymph, spends much of its life underwater, and then drifts up to the surface where it sheds its nymphal shuck, climbs to the surface, its wings unfold, and it flies away as a dun. That nymph stuck in the surface is considered the emerging phase. Now these adult duns fly away to the streamside grasses and trees for a period of up to 24 hours where they will mate and then the males expire. The females will then fly back to the river, flutter around, lay their eggs generally in flatter, more stable water and then themselves expire onto the surface where they become an easy meal for trout. Generally spinners will return to the water at the most comfortable times of day. So it could be that nice warm feeling mid-morning when you're thinking, oh, that cloud's burnt off, I'm feeling comfortable. It's nice and calm. The spinners think so too. Now, imitating spent spinners requires very specific imitations. I generally fish a cut down hackled style fly with well splayed tails, a mahogany, mahogany brown colored sort of body, and a light application of grizzle hackle clipped off at the bottom so it sits flush on the surface. These are easy to see. They imitate the filaments of these spent spinners wings quite nicely and they're nice and sparse and easy to cast. Now I generally use longer le level tippets, especially lighter tippets such as 5X and 6X when fishing spent spinnerfuls because these fish are generally feeding in some very very calm water. Okay here I am anticipating a spinnerfall. The day has brightened up, it's quite pleasant out with minimal wind, just feels like these spinners can happily drop their eggs and then expire on the surface. For this I've chosen my 8 foot 8 4 weight Scott G series, uh, matched with a 4 weight Airflow Tactical fly line. What I'm going to want is pinpoint presentations, accuracy and delicacy. Because as you can see on the flat above me, I don't think the trout are going to accept any heavy or wayward presentations. Now spinners will generally choose calm water in which to drop their eggs, let them drop in through to the gravel, and then expire themselves. I'm moving up this edge here, expecting fish to be in very, very shallow, soft water. I've already seen a couple of risers within a rod length or two of the bank. As I move, I'm going to move very slowly, and I'm going to assess every rise and figure out where I should be presenting from. In such glassy water, you sometimes and often do not want to be casting up over the rise and showing the fish your leader. What you want to do is often come in low and side on, or from an upstream position and drift your fly down, fly first. Now to present a drag free drift or a fly first presentation downstream, you should refer back to our lockdown lesson series and have a look at our serpentine cast and have a look at our reach mends. As you send that fly at a slight angle downstream, slip some line, reach back upstream and let your line land. Now as your fly drifts downstream on target to your, to your fish, slightly follow it downstream with the rod tip, feeding that slack line down through to him. Just think back cast, forward cast, shoot line, drop out to the side into an upstream direction. Now for your serpentine cast, it's similar except you're sending a series of wriggles into your line which are going to slowly unfold as the currents drag them down. It's perfect for wide, broad, riffly water. Think back cast, forward cast, shoot some line and wriggle your rod tip on the way down. A series of short, regular riffles are going to get you a nice long presentation downstream to that fish. You're worried about striking a fish from a downstream position? Just wait till it's in his mouth and lift the rod.
Now when the fish start rising, it's important not to rush in. These fish have just moved into potentially very shallow water, very spooky water, and only just starting to feed. The more they feed, the more confident they'll become, and the easier it will be to approach them. Below me, I have fish starting to feed on spinners out in the soft water on the edge. I have a nice riffle pouring in too, so I'm always going to be wary of that compound hatch situation where the fish may start feeding on mayfly emerges and then suddenly switch to spinners. So it's important to note the, the rise forms. Generally a little bulge in the surface is to something being sucked from beneath the surface. So I'll be focusing on emerges. A nice nose rise, nice and relaxed, is generally going to be two spent spinners. Something unhurried because these insects aren't going anywhere. They could also be a head tail rise to spinners. Right now I'm just seeing the gentlest of sips on the edges down here to the right. So I'm going to go down and investigate. Now a gentle breeze has gotten up this morning, which means that I'm now going to be searching for spinnerfuls in calmer areas. The breeze is coming in from the north, so I'm going to be looking along that far bank, that calm strip of water, because that is where I expect any spinnerful to occur. Now along that calm edge there, I'm going to be fishing a very soft spent spinner style pattern tied with spent CDC wings. It offers a very, very flush floating limitation. It's easy to see with the darker wings, especially with the glare I'm going to have there. And I'm also going to be fishing probably on a diagonally upstream direction, just due to the nature of that water. Now, if I have trouble seeing that spent spinner low on the surface of that glare, I might tie it on a foot to two feet behind a high-vis parachute, something with a dark wing to stand out in that silvery water. So in summary, I believe the most important aspect to being successful during a spinnerfall is identifying the water where the spinners are going to be. On a hot sunny day, look for areas of shade. On cooler days, look for the areas out of the main breeze, out of that cool weather, maybe off a high bank or somewhere that's a little bit more sheltered. Feel for the most pleasant time of the day. Now the difference between a size 14 and a 16, or 16 and an 18, might not seem much to you and I, but to trout feeding on a plethora of naturals in the surface, it does. So be sure to have a look at what's around and match the size of the natural. Employ longer, lighter leaders and tippets, and a presentation cast such as your serpentine, your pile and your reaches, as found in our lockdown lesson series.